Um, we we'll have a letter here from Audrey's audiologist um, stating that it's in her best interest that all communication be in written form, which I can present to you. Um, and then also I have some questions I would like to have answered about the nature and cause of these proceedings before we can actually prepare our defense. And I tried to get them answered yesterday, but Alaylee was not able to get back to me. I left her a voicemail. Um, and then also I had requested transcripts and documentation, but I provided an incomplete file. And I brought every copy that I was given yesterday so that we could compare it with your copy. And you'll clearly see that I'm missing the documentation well, I, I requested. I'll certainly take your word for it that you have an incomplete record. Um, <clears throat> well, so I continued this matter on June 7th, and you waited until yesterday, nearly two weeks later, to ask for information to prepare your defense. Why did you delay so long? Um, because I didn't have the questions until yesterday. Why was that? Um, because our legal advisor didn't get back to me until yesterday. Well, let me deal first with the issue of Ms. Conkin. Uh, sorry, uh, Audrey Cantor. Um, there has been no communication that has been presented to Ms. Cantor other than written communication. Uh, she has received the citation, uh, and uh, she uh, is not disadvantaged uh, by that. She has chosen not to appear. She could have appeared. She could have hired an attorney, uh, none of which has happened. Uh, and uh, I have known since the first hearing, June 6th, 7th, that she has significant hearing difficulties. You had testified to that. Uh, and <clears throat> at that time, uh, when we were discussing a continuance, I clearly recall having asked uh, whether she was going to appear, and Mr. McBride said emphatically, no, she would not. So I don't see any reason to continue the matter with respect to Ms. Cantor's interest, because she's, not, she's made it clear she's not going to appear. And you're seeking uh, a continuance. Tell me about Mr. whatever you might know or choose to offer about Frank Cantor. Why has he not appeared, do you know? Because we need answers to the questions that I have in regards to the nature and cause of these proceedings before any of us can tell, prepare. Tell me what you mean by nature and cause of the proceedings. Uh, well, I'll ask the questions. What are these proceedings governed under, admiral, equity, or common law? Are these Proceeding civil or criminal actions, is there evidence of complaining party or damaged party? I can answer all of those directly, and we don't need a continuance for that. What's the first well, question? The What's first the first question, question? Is are these proceedings governed under admiralty, equity, or civil law? They're governed under civil law. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, so admiralty, equity, or common law? Neither. None of the above. They're regulated by statute. Which would be common law then, No, correct? common law is different from, stat from statute. It's statutory law. You can go to the law books and find them. You can go to the codes, the state of Oregon, and the codes of Jackson County. So you're basing your information on the codes of Jackson County, the ORDS, I believe it is? No. The Oregon's revised statute. The direct answer is the Oregon revised statutes authorize specific kinds of counties, of which Jackson County is one, to establish hearings, procedures for the adjudication of code enforcement matters. That's the state authorization. Jackson County has availed itself of that authority and established a system of hearings under Jackson County Code Section 294, Chapter 294, uh, 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 which is the authority for these proceedings. So it is statutory. State authorizes the county to accept, to adopt uh, a system such as this, and the county has done so. Okay, well, on my citation paper, it says that I'm being charged with certain codes mm -hmm. and certain violations. To look those up, you would then look them up under the Oregon Revised Statute. Is that not correct? Well, let's take a look at this particular citation you're referring to. 
referring to because I think that is not correct. I believe, and I'm actually, actually, I'm very confident that the citation tells you what's where the, the statutory source is. Right, Jackson County. Jackson JCC. County Code, Land Development Ordinance, and two counts of the Land Development Ordinance. You know, there's no, there's no mystery there. That's where those uh, uh, requirements are set forth. Right. So, there, your proceedings are governed by the JCC Code, whatever that should stand for. It's Jackson County. The co codified, codified ordinance. Jackson, Jackson, sorry, codified Jackson County Code. Order. Jackson, yes, Jackson County Code, or what? Yeah, right. So the second question is, are these civil or criminal actions? Uh, they're, boy, uh, they are, uh, certainly are not criminal actions. Uh, <laughs> they are, I would guess they are administrative proceedings, which would fall within the body of civil law. So if they are civil law and they fall under the body of civil proceedings, then you must abide by the Oregon Judicial Civil Law proceedings, which I have a copy of. But do you want to tell me how I'm violating them? Well, my discovery was violated. I requested certain documents and certain transcripts. I understand, I, I, I understand that. Right. I understand that. Form. And I understand that. How else? That's not a violation that I have committed. I'm not saying that you violated. How, how are these the proceedings? Court. How are these proceedings well, otherwise inconsistent with uh, Oregon Rules of Civil Procedure? In the summons portion of this documentation, your summons oh, the is actually, citation, yeah. right, is not correct. And I can show, I, I have a copy of it here, a genuine copy of it. I can. Of the, of the summons? Of the citation. I have one too. Right. And I also have a copy of the Oregon Rules of Civil Procedures where I can show you that there's. So go ahead and tell me. Okay. You're basically, you're basically challenging jurisdiction. So if you can establish it proper challenge jurisdiction, I'll hear it. Summons, Rule 7. A definition for purpose of this rule, the plaintiff shall include any party issue Slow, down, slow down a little bit, please. Sorry. For purpose of this rule, plaintiff shall include any party issuing a summons. Defendant shall include any party upon whom service of summons is sought. For purpose of this rule, a true copy of the summons and complainant mean an exact and complete copy of the original summons and complainant. Okay. So we've established that. Type, the title of the cause specifying the name of the court which, in which the complaint is filed, the name of the parties to the action. It's missing the name of the other party. What if is? There's the summons. If there's a complaint that was issued, if there's a damaged party or complaining party, then we have the right to know that. It's not on there. What's, what's not on there? It's not clear to me what's not on there. The party issuing the complaint. It's issued on a form of Jackson County which is Jackson. the party issuing the Forbidden. complaint. It says at the top, in the name of Jackson County, complaint of county violation. I Jackson County that. is the... Of course above the law. What this is saying is that there has to be a complaining party. Jackson County cannot be... ...in a way that... ...a complaining party. Why, why, do you say, why do you say that? Because it's in writing right here. What, what, is, what in that writing says you can't bo be both the plaintiff and the complaining party? It's forbidden. Uh, didn't I didn't hear that? Read it. Read me the part that forbids it. Well, the word forbidden isn't in here, but yeah. that's what it states. But t read that. I mean, uh, I, I read that to me. The part so that for you're the maintaining. This rule: the plaintiff shall include any party issuing summons. The defendant shall include any party upon whom service of summons is sought. For purpose of this rule, a true copy of the summons and complaint means an exact copy and complete copy of the original summons and complaint. Well, it's and what complaint. you have. It's, uh, it's you just not what I have. What I have is a statement from Dean Walker, an assertion from Dean Walker that this is what's going on. What that's I would what a like, complaint is. No, what I would like is the complaint from the party You're, that uh, initiated so the let complaint. So let me, let me clarify a definitional problem here. 
your the word complaint